Hey everyone, how you doing today? Thought I'd get another video out with a bunch of updates and cover a few different things today. Um, to start with, I wanted to cover, uh, well, I'll just show you kind of where I'm at on a new space station for Excalibur's February challenge. Um, idea and case in point I've been going for on this one is more or less a postmodern type style, think space agency look, international space station, but uh, you know, a little bit more, I don't know, uh, in the future, but you know, smaller, but uh, for less people, I guess, and working in, a, in an Imperium. So this is what I got so far on this one. I'm, uh, I got a couple issues with it currently. Um, essentially speaking, this is kind of like a trimmed down Helix Orbital. Um, which this one's a bigger station, but it's class five um, and has quite a lot of farm plots in it and other things. Um, it needs to be updated though. It's, it was not updated in a long time, um, especially with storage. That's its main thing really. Um, so this one basically has a hanger with a landing pad on the top of it. Uh, decent, decent sized hanger to get, you know, most SVs in it. Um, I won't say HVs because we're in space, but technically you could dock an HV on these now too because you can undock those from other vehicles and maneuver them slowly in space. So you could park an HV here. I'm not sure exactly why you'd want to, but it can be done. Um, and then another landing pad up here, this lower uh, circular room is two floors, uh, basically has a 36 grow plot farm on the top floor and just open area on the bottom right now, which would probably be living space, crew quarters, things like that. Um, very simplistic overall design. The crafting would be in the hangar. Um, a lot of the, the hangar wall blocks and other blocks would probably be replaced with storage uh, containers. Um, once I would figure out, you know, how much storage should it have. Now this has to be tier two, and the point is to be able to upgrade it to a tier three. So I would need to uh, put in places for other parts, um, or I'd like to at least, for like a shield, um, deconstructors, furnaces, things like that. I think, um, so I don't know if I have actually enough space in here to handle all of that. Um, I didn't, you know, if I dump it all into the hangar area, it's really going to minimize the, uh, the space inside the hangar, unless I made it just bigger. But, you know... I'll, uh, I'll, I'll come to that when I get to it, I guess, and uh, make whatever changes are needed. So that's on one thing. Um, now, on a side note, um, I actually started a different one as well. Um, and this one is being trying to be more conservative of block usage and essentially be cheaper. Um, but... You know, get, I'm getting rid of a lot of the aesthetics, like the big tower thing in the middle, and basically, in one one form or another, having a, a rectangle with some solar panels on one side of it. Um, and that's kind of what this is about. I don't know if I like it. Um, I think it would be practical, probably, and more cost-effective versus the other station I just showed you um, for function. So I'm not rolling it out. I'm just, I, you know, aesthetically speaking, eh, I'm not terribly thrilled with it right now. Now, I wanted uh, some other things that are kind of actually bugging me a little bit, even on this build. Um, one thing I got a big, big problem with is the uh, limit count on solar panels. Um, it's set at 15 in the game. And that continually screws me up from building like any of the formations I would like to with solar panels. Um, if you take a look here, you realize that since I'm trying to go with symmetry on solar panels here, um, 15 doesn't work. Um, essentially I have 15 solar panels, I'm always down one. And then I was starting to think about it, I'm like, why would you have any of your main parts like that at an odd number? Um, Turrets aren't that way, um, other parts aren't that way, but, but solar panels are. Basically, in a nutshell, what I'm, what, what I'm thinking is the limit for solar panels should be 16, not 15. It would make a world of difference. And 12 um, isn't good either. Um, well, 
12 works, but I wouldn't want to reduce the number of solar panels that we have. And basically, in increments of four allows you to build just about any kind of uh, setup you want. Um, so, for instance, if there was 14 so total solar panels, I would have another problem where unless I ran seven in a row, they would be off-centered like what, what you see over here. So that kind of bugs me, and I would really like to see at least one more solar uh, maximum count of solar panels added to the limit. Um, case in point, back at the Helix Orbitable, uh, blah, 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 uh, Orbital, <laughs> um, I had the same problem with the, with the solar panels. I absolutely did not want to do what I did at the end of this, having them stick out all weird like that. But in order to get the maximum amount of solar panels on this, I had to. Um, I, all I really wanted to do was just make another row of these coming out, just like the, the previous ones did. But because of that limitation, it made the whole thing bizarre, and, and I couldn't add the last solar panel to it. So I in, instead had to come up with something else, which I don't really like the looks of, uh, to make it work. And I, if the number was set to 16, all these problems would go away. Now, on the uh, larger Hefata spaceport, um, I, of course, knew about that issue, and I came up with a different arrangement of solar panels, which I could do on this particular station. However, I wouldn't have done it this way if I could have had 16 solar panels. It would have been different than this. Um, but this one, I did like three rows of five, which works and made it 15 solar panels. Um, this one here, it's just, I got no, I got no answer. I got no way. I, I don't even know what to do with this. Um, so it, it kind of sucks. And, you know, I hear from other players too, that solar energy, you know, it, it's not that good and it takes, and you can't really get enough power to do a lot of the things you would like to with the count that is there already. Um, so I'm thinking one more, you know, if you want to keep it close to what it is, is great. But if you wanted to do, if you wanted to make it better, um, you could bring that count up to 20 or 24 or 28, but I would definitely do an increments of four and an even number. Um, and that would make it all work out pretty good. So that's, that's that thing. Now, another thing I had a problem with on this base, and it has to do with a block that I, I definitely believe the game needs uh, or should have. Um, if you take a look at the squarest looking angles I've got in the bottom of the floor, it is not what I wanted to be here. It's just I don't have a choice. Let me show you this example over here of what I'm talking about. Um, over here, we have some really cool blocks that can do these, these beveled edges. And what I wanted to do is make some like angled curves into the floor of that matching kind of the structure. The problem is, is there is a missing block uh, that would tie that in. And that is essentially just like this block you see here, if it was a half block in, here, let me get my cursor on the screen. If this area was a half block here and divided right along the line. So basically it's almost the identical same block is just a standard half block, but with one vertex raised up to full height with your uh, your uh, triangle, basically your face divided and bent along that same seam here. Um, and you can see how that would fit in, like with this alternative block, which also leaves a hole in the floor. Um, and this one, you just can't set it to anything, basically. Um, like this block here, it just needs this part to be a half block um, and then you could that would open up a wide range of different kinds of things you could do and it's a really low polygon block and it's very simplistic so it's not like a stretch I think it could be heavily used for a lot of things um, basically the orange down here is basically holes in the floor or you know if I do any of this stuff these are the problems that are gonna incur um, so therefore I typically can't do that stuff and have to find a squarish way to make it work. Um, just, just a recommendation on blocks. Now digging into blocks further, 
Um, here's some example blocks I brought out here. And obviously, I think most of you are well aware that using the standard set of, here, let me get a block. Um, the standard set of these, these wedges here, you have a texturing problem on one side or the other, typically. And that has to do with, um, essentially, you'd want this to be a separate texture as opposed to this surface. And unfortunately, it's not. So it, ca it causes you lots of things you can't do and you have to keep it all the same and you can't have like a dividing colored line going up the side. So I was trying to uh, wrap my brain around why is that? What, what's going on here? What are the mechanics on why this isn't UV'd that way? Well, I think I got a solution finally. Um, thinking about it a little bit more. I was kind of diving into some some of the older graphics programming stuff and there's something known as a cube map and that is basically a six-sided like texture arrangement and I believe this game fully operates on cube maps for all the blocks in other words that's saying that one block can have no more than six separate texturable areas which makes sense you know it's a block it has six sides um, and to prove that, that concept, I started taking a look at some blocks that I thought were just kind of intentionally or, or not intentionally, but just not right. Like this block here. I like this block a lot, very useful block, but it, it annoyed me a lot of times that, okay, I can, I can texture this side, but when I go to texture this side, it's going to be the same texture as the entire face of it. Um, but then I started counting. Um, look, looking at the number of sides on it. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, basically, it can't, I'm thinking, um, because it already hit six separate areas on this block. Um, so therefore, one of the sides had to be the same as another side. And case in point, that's why this is this way. Taking a look at this block, same setup. You have, uh, essentially this is almost a cube, so you have six surface areas that can be individually textured. And when you get down to this side, if this was divided from the other part here, you would have seven surfaces. So that's kind of the deal. Now, if you take a look at the uh, very close relative of this block, which is this block over here, which simply doesn't have the flat uh, surface on one of the edges, this one does uh, color and texture like you would expect it to. But this one can't because it's got seven surfaces. So I think that is the fundamental problem on so many of the blocks on why we have these, these uh, texturing and coloring issues on them. Um, so I just, you know, so rather than ragging on a lot of these, and I did, I've ragged on this too, I want, I want this fixed, it's limiting, I hate it um, because of this issue. But technically speaking, using the setup that's there, I don't have a better solution on how to make it work being limited to six surfaces per block. Now that is probably done for performance as well. Um, and it's a, it's a normal graphic thing, so it's not like uh, anything new. It's just uh, to fix seemingly this small problem here, I think would be a much bigger problem in the core game engine itself. Um, and I think that's why it, Plane it simply hasn't been done. Um, I know that I know the devs know about this. It's been brought up a bazillions of times on this kind of thing, and I think they're kind of stuck, where they they don't really have a solution for this. Um, and it's it's a little it's a little troublesome. Um, I don't I don't have any good explanation though. I think the entire system would have to change. And that also, if it did change, could impact performance in a negative way on the game. So just taking a look at that, that's kind of um, the conclusion, I believe. Um, unless someone else has another idea on, or if I'm off base on what I'm thinking here. But it makes sense. And the more blocks I look at, 
Um, there's never a block that has more than six uh, texture both surface areas on it, any single block. Um, and I believe that is exactly the reason why, and that's why we have these problems like this with this block here too. So that's, uh, that, that's just a side note thing. So basically, two things so far, solar panel count, I seriously think it needs to be set to 16 instead of 15. And yeah, this, I don't know if it's gonna be fixable. Um, it's, it does kind of suck because this is very restrictive for builders um, having to deal with this. Such a, such a widely used common block too and you're always forced with not being able to properly be able to texture these or even color them correctly um, if you're trying to make like nice looking shaped body lines and things like that. Now as an alternative though what I've been using probably more so than what these blocks are is this alternative set which I kind of did in the floor there of using let me get to the right page using cut corner C sliced corner D and corner half A3 medium. So these blocks, however, have, they have a different angle to them. So it's not the same. It's a set of three. It makes a wedge pattern similar to what these do, but when coloring these, you have separate colors on the sides and that's guaranteed on symmetry too. So if, you, if I go to the other side, I'll get the same results. Um, where these, these, these blocks tend to work on one side and not the other side. Um, so there's that. And this is a potential workaround, but again, it's a different angle. Um, but it's as close as you're gonna get to this. So on other things, um, Next week, I'm gonna try to uh, take a look at the Bastard CV again. Um, this time, not uh, off screen, like rebuilding the entire ship. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna try to work with what's here and try to, I don't know, do things that I would do to my own ships to try to make them look the way I would like them to look. Um, so I'm gonna hit that again, apologize for the, the the first attempt I got way carried away and that wasn't really what I wanted to do so I will uh, address this again um, there is uh, people asking about the status of the space carrier um, right now I've kind of I've been on a kind of a hold with it I uh, I've had so many other projects to look at and here, here's mentally uh, what kind of happened to me on this one is it's such a daunting task doing a ship this size with so many places in it that I felt I was starting to rush it and just trying to get it done. And I don't like to work that way, honestly. Um, it's like, hurry up and finish it. Um, it it kind of sucks. And I, and I kind of got, got burned out and kind of tired of working on it. And, uh, and then I was finding myself just trying to get stuff done extra fast rather than like taking my time with each little area. It's just like, I wanna just mass get this whole room done right now and blah, blah, blah. And I only got like an hour to work on it today. And, and, and uh, so that was kind of my mindset and I didn't wanna continue that way. There's so much time and effort put into this ship by uh, myself and a bunch of other authors that it needs to be right and I need to treat it like it should be treated. Um, in other words, be, pretty meticulous at every little area and try to detail and tweak that out as much as possible. With so many other projects uh, ongoing as well, I kept on shifting in between one project and another and that's that's getting kind of rough. Um, and a lot of it has to do with I've been trying to meet a lot of these challenges plus I wanted to get uh, certain things made for certain races, such as starter CVs and space stations for MCRN and the Creel, um, things like that. So with that, with the combination of, of other uh, projects and the fact that sometimes I get a little bit burned out on working on something and I, it's worthwhile for me to set it aside and hit it when I'm looking at it with, with fresh eyes again. Um, I did the same thing with the Creel Beholder. I started this, this ship 
I don't know, quite a long time ago now. Um, and, you know, I did get back to it. I, I have gotten back to just about everything I've ever started that way, but sometimes after a period of a few months, um, like in the case with this one, I didn't touch it for probably two, two, three months, and then here I am back to it. Now it's done, and I do plan on releasing this, I believe, tomorrow. So um, I got to do a whole bunch of screenshots and stuff. I wanted to make a video. I've got this uh, this music I made for it, but I don't have much experience in video making and editing the video, and it, that's going to take a lot more time, and I don't know if I want to do it with this one. So I think I'm going to... I'll keep the song and keep that in mind for a generalized Creel video in the future, but right now I think I want to get it released to the workshop and just do my normal thing of taking a, a bunch of photo shoots of it and uh, building the post from that. Uh, it would be a little easier. Unfortunately, I don't have good software nor much experience at all in video editing. Um, I can, I'm sure I could learn it more. Um, but I got to put time into that, and I just don't have much time. So there's, there's an issue with that. Um, I do absolutely want to get back to the space carrier, and I know it's uh, taking longer. I wanted to get it out in January, and now it's mid-February, and it's still sitting here, and I haven't really done anything with it in oh, a little while now, and I, I apologize for that, but you will see it someday on the workshop. Um, it's just... I'm still looking at this thinking I got another 60, 70, 80 hours to put into this um, if I do it right. If I try to rush it, um, well, maybe I could reduce that hour count some, but it, it will suffer from it. So I don't want to do that either. Too much time and effort into it to just get it out the door to say it's done. Um, not the way I like to work, not the way I ever want to work. I want to, I try to do everything I possibly know how to do to every creation um, to try to tweak it out and make it the best I possibly can. And that usually is a slow process that takes a while. Um, now, another thing, too, I've been preparing a, uh, some new tutorials on block work and other things, and I'm in a... Uh, probably debut a video on that next week and it's more in depth getting into the blocks how you can use them the different kinds of shapes you can make with them uh, transitions this that and the other thing but uh, I did something like that briefly in the past but uh, I got something kind of planned out that's far more in depth than what I did before and hopefully can explain things better um, we'll see we'll see um, so that, I'm going to do a video on that next week. I plan on doing a video on this next week. And uh, this guy over here, I'm, I, did, I got some more texturing done on it. Um, in each work, though, in my opinion, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't look good enough. It's too plain yet. I got issues with that. It's bugging me. And I'm, I'm comparing it. Basically, I use the Creel Gast as my standard, I guess, for what I believe the Creel should look like. Or, well, I'm not saying this shape, but the amount of detail level that, that are that's in this ship. And this ship, I think, is subpar currently to what this ship is uh, in those regards. So I think there's it needs some more block work. It needs some more detail. Um, there's too many big plane areas in here. Uh that could use some more attention. So that is another thing I plan on doing is doing like a part, I don't know, was it part six, I think now, um, on this. Um, and the next part is going to be to try to take what I've got here and enhance the looks of it um, one way or another. And uh, that could be interesting. That's a, that's a part of a video that I typically, I don't think I've ever made a video doing that. Um, a lot of times I've done some build videos, but all this final tweaking and, and stuff, I don't think I've ever recorded or shown a video of doing that part of it. So I think that could be a little bit more interesting. Um, not that I think this looks hideous or anything. It's just, it's, it's in my opinion, just kind of plainish. Um, even after texturing the, these arm areas, 
They look all right, I guess, but I think this looks a whole lot better over here. So that's just that's just me. That's just my opinion of it. Um, so yeah, I want to uh, hit that up too. That's pretty much all I had for today, but um, hopefully next week I'll have a, a little better line of videos out um, um, on various things and show you some progress on stuff. And I'm curious on your thoughts on the space station. Um, due to its vertical layout the way it is, it's not going to be the most efficient versus cost versus like space and functionality. It's not bad, but it's not as optimized nearly as it could be. And of, co and of course, to do that, um, to make things cheaper with the amount of room and stuff in it, I would be, again, looking into like what I was doing over here, more of a box shape rectangle design because these ultimately are going to be less expensive versus the amount of room that you get in them. Um, cosmetically speaking, that's a different story. I do like the more elaborate setup of something like this. I think it looks a little more realistic and fancier and, and whatnot. It's just for gameplay, it's, that's not necessarily a good thing. It's, um, it depends, you know, how much you want to spend for it. Is the added uh, stuff worthwhile where you'd want to spend your in-game resources for that or would you rather have something that's more to the point and cheaper to build that does the same thing uh, that, that's a good question too i don't know you know i guess it, it's to, to each your own on that aspect of it i think this looks better than the other one but compared comparatively speaking because i can't build it as big as like I did even the helix that it suffers a little bit because I would like to actually have it bigger than what it is but it's a starter and that's just pointless too so um, I got some big space stations already so I'm not so worried about that I don't have any small space stations so so that's kind of the the game plan this might be a little bit big for a starter maybe I don't know all right, well, anyway, you all have yourself a good weekend, and I will be back next week, hopefully with some neat videos of stuff, especially I'm looking forward to the uh, the, the block thing, too. I uh, kind of set up a test world with all kinds of examples showing, like, individual blocks, how they can be used, how they can be used with other blocks, what to look for, and it's basically, I think it would have been a, a really nice tool for myself when I first started out this game as well. Um, because I didn't know, you know, you look at this big block menu and without knowing it's just like, ah, I don't even know what these are for and why, whoa, whoa, that's, that's a weird shape. And what, what do you do with that and why? And it, it took uh, several builds before I came to grips with the blocks myself. And, um, actually, you know, before I go, I'm going to show you two really old ships I made, um, kind of back to back. And I think I've showed this ship before, the Nebula MK3. And this is before I had block knowledge of even those, uh, this set of, oh, wrong, wrong area, hold on a second. Uh, even before I knew about these blocks. So I, I didn't know how these worked or what they were for, really, when I built this ship. I knew only very specific angles, like I knew... Uh, the 45 wedge, I knew the angle corner for the 45 wedge, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> and and you can see in the hall that it doesn't do anything else. Um, so it's pretty simplistic there. So on, on the ship I made right after that one, trying to make an improvement on the original one, I made this Nebula MK4. And you can tell here, I learned those blocks I just showed you, um, these guys here. So I figured out how they work, how they fit together, and what kind of shapes I can make with those. Now, I didn't know much in transitions at the time, though. I kind of knew, hey, I can run these blocks, but I didn't know what to do with them or how to break it up. I got, I basically did the same shape and pattern all the way across. Got some kind of squares, blocky-looking stuff on the sides here, um, and didn't really, didn't, 
did fully understand it yet. Um, but I had at least the base idea of knowing how to place these blocks to make this kind of shape. Um, as in functionality, now this is a, a different case on the two ships. This one obviously is a wider shape. I thought looked better than the Nebula MK3. I thought it was a better ship all the way around. But uh, kind of a mistake I did on this one, I do believe, is the fact that I decided I wanted to mount two big hangar doors in the ceiling. Um, but it also has a hangar door out the back. So, yeah, this is neat and cool and all, and you can get some pretty big SVs down in the hangar, and the hangar is pretty good sized. Um, but um, now I look at it as in, look at all the space up here I wasted for docking potential because I've got these hangar doors here now. You're not landing ships here. And the amount of space that's here and the amount of SVs or something you could dock on it is pretty significant. So... At the end of the day, I believe I, I wasted a whole lot of space because of my decision to put hangar doors on the ceiling. And in other places of the ship, it has a much reduced farm and other things versus the older version. The uh, Where'd it go? There it is. The uh, Nebula MK3 actually had a larger farm and, and more of other things going on for it. Um, and I, I built this ship in survival, and this is probably the most used ship I ever had gameplay in in Imperium really sucks that this ship was built in Alpha 5 so that's uh, now I played basically quite a bit in Alpha 5 and Alpha 6 and then I freaked out on building ever since then and I've done a couple little romps with the game but but nothing significant um, which I do plan on changing when Alpha 12 comes out I'd like to just do a new playthrough um, I think it could help me build as well because uh, so much has changed since I started building. I try to adapt. I pick up news. I try to I try to put in trendy features. You know, drone hatches would be one of those um, things like that. But um, actually playing the game, I think I gained some experience again on on building, kind of knowing the ins and outs and what really works in gameplay and what really what doesn't um, when I started building it was all about function of course I try to make them look nice but it was really about function and there was a time too when I look at the workshop and I would see some some uh, nice looking fancy uh, creations out on the workshop and then I was like well they're silly I mean it doesn't you know it doesn't have enough constructors and it doesn't it doesn't have enough guns and it doesn't doesn't do this but it, it's really pretty but you know and so I kind of was one of those people that was like, eh, I don't see why you would put fluff or, you know, crew quarters or any of that stuff in a ship. Um, it's just, just wasting resources. Well, after building for quite a long time, I sort of understand now, and, uh, and I do it on some of my ships too, but only if it's got the space because it's always, always going to be function first. If I've got extra room and I don't know what to do with it, then I will look into fluff type things, you know, crew quarters, lounges, whatever. Um, that's only if I have enough space. So if I build a ship big enough, yeah, I can do that stuff. And that stuff's actually fun to do. I do like to do it. I don't get to do it that often. Um, but I, I get it now. Um, but I didn't used to. Just, just weird thing with me. Anyway, again, have yourself a great weekend. Uh, look for the Creel Beholder should be re released tomorrow. Uh, I don't know exactly what time tomorrow, but tomorrow. Okay, see you later.